So let's say that we have this sample of some type of an element. We know that it's a pure sample. There's only one element in, in this sample right over here. But we want to identify what element it is. Well, in chemistry, we have a technique known as mass spectrometry. Spectrometry, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Often, it's also known as mass spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. And I won't go into details of the process. But what you're able to do when you conduct mass spectrometry or mass spectroscopy on the sample is analyze the atomic masses of the various isotopes in your sample and also know the relative abundance. What percentage of your sample is one isotope or another? And say, let's say that we're able to run the sample through mass spectrometry or mass spectroscopy, and we get the following data. So this tells us the mass spectrum for an average sample of a pure element is shown below, and it's a sample of this right over here. And so what this tells us is that we have an isotope right over here with an atomic mass of 84 universal atomic mass units, but it's a very small percentage of our sample. It looks like it's maybe 1 or 2%. Then you have another isotope with an atomic mass of 86 universal atomic mass units. And that looks like it's about 10% of our sample. The y-axis here, the vertical axis, shows our relative abundance, or you could say the percent of our sample. And then we have another isotope that has an atomic mass of 87 universal atomic mass units. And then the bulk of our sample is the isotope. So you could say the most common isotope in our sample right over here. It looks like it's about 82 or 83% of our sample has an atomic mass of 88 universal atomic mass units. So the average atomic mass of this element, if I were to just eyeball it, it's going to be pretty close to 88 universal atomic mass units. But it's probably going to be a little bit lower because these other isotopes are going to bring the average down. So we can immediately look at our periodic table of elements and think about what are our good candidates. So if we look at strontium right over here, SR, it has an average atomic mass a little bit under 88. It has an average atomic mass of 87.62. So just right off the bat, this is my best candidate. But there's two other elements that are pretty close. Yttrium over here has an average atomic mass above 88 but below 89. So maybe, although we'll have to figure out whether how you can get above 88 mathematically. And then there's also rubidium. Maybe the average gets low enough to be rubidium. But right now, strontium is looking like the best candidate. But let's actually just take the weighted average of the isotopes from our mass spectrum to figure out for sure that it is strontium. And so to figure out the average atomic mass based on this mass spectrum, what we would do is, let's say this is going to be, let's say this is about 1%. So we have 0.01 times, that would be 1%, times 84 universal atomic mass units, plus this is 10% times 86 universal atomic mass units. So this would be 0.1, that's 10%, times, and I'll actually write times this way instead of just a dot so we don't get confused with the decimals, times 86 universal atomic mass units, plus, this looks like it's about, I don't know, 8% or 7%. So plus 0.07 times 87 universal atomic mass units. And then plus, this looks like it's about 82%. So 0.82 times 88 universal atomic mass units. And so let's find this weighted average. That will give us the average atomic mass of this mystery element, which right now I'm thinking is strontium. So 0 0.01 times 84 plus 0 0.1 times 86 plus 0 0.07 times 87 plus 0.82 times 88 is equal to 87.69 as the average atomic mass of this mystery substance. And so let's go back to our periodic table of elements. And we see 
that that is very close to what is listed here for strontium. So I feel pretty good that the element in question here is indeed strontium. And we're done.